Scylla Elworthy. Scylla is a peace builder and the founder of the Oxford Research Group. Thank you for joining me on the program today. Um, let's talk first about this Gaziantep Declaration, which was just signed this week um, in southeastern Turkey. It talks about um, countries changing their approach to migration, going from an emerging emergency response to Resilience, what does that mean? Resilience look, means looking at both the causes of migration and addressing those so that people don't have to leave in the first place. And secondly, how the trauma that particularly children have been through and their mothers, mm. uh, because if you can address what happened to them when they were either bombed or having to flee very fast, mm -hmm. if that lodges in their system and they never are able to address it, those children will be seriously psychologically damaged and that will be breeding problems in the future. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I can't even imagine. According to the UNHCR, the number of people forcibly displaced worldwide has reached almost 71 million. What are some of the main reasons why people are being forced to leave their homes and in some cases their home countries? Climate change is a very big one. Okay. In the uh, sub-Saharan Africa area, for example, when desertification moves in, the herders move into the farmer's land, the farmers are furious, fight them, and then there's a mass displacement, and people have nowhere to go. Really, there is no option for them but to try to find some land where they can feed their families. Mm -hmm. yeah, what are some of the current solutions to help people uh, who are forcibly displaced? I mean, are there... Um, are these, do these people have any protection of any kind? Um, really very little, especially where it's happening in very, very poor countries. Mm -hmm. But the other obvious reason for forced migration is conflict. Mm -hmm. And when you look at the causes of why um, peoples in these troubled places are being armed so easily, we have to take responsibility in the West for that. Right. You know that we spend worldwide $1,739 billion a year on militarization mm. and the production of weapons and the trade in weapons. My country, the UK, is one of those countries mm. who are the main arm traders. In fact, the five permanent members of the Security Council of the UN are the biggest arms producers and traders. So we have to take responsibility for not making this a militarized issue by the ease with which people can obtain weapons, bring conflicts to an armed struggle, mm -hmm. and then what happens then is the result is not just the forced migration, but all the trafficking that goes with it. That means particularly trafficking of women, right. prostitution, trafficking in drugs and trafficking in weapons. So we have to address the causes of the whole thing, and many of those lie in the arming of conflicts that could be solved in other ways. We know how to prevent conflict now. Yeah. Uh, in my introduction, I mentioned that Turkey hosts the largest number of refugees in the world, yeah. Syrians who have fled their home country because of the ongoing uh, civil war. It's not just people who are displaced, um, but also countries that host them that are yeah. struggling. Uh, what kind of burden does it put on countries uh, like Syria, who are hosting millions of refugees? Turkey, Turkey, for, I mean, I mean, Turkey has done a really great job. I'm an admirer. I came here first when the first influx of refugees came, and I saw what Turkey was managing to do, and it's admirable. Mm -hmm. But what has to happen is, as, a, as I mentioned it, the trauma that these people have gone through, as well as the education that you're offering, the acclimatization to the country and its, and its culture, but also to treat the internal wounds as well as the external wounds mm -hmm. that migrants and refugees have been through. Because if that's not done, and the Maya Foundation in this country is doing a great job of it, mm -hmm. but that needs to be expanded massively so that the problems coming in the future are not compounded. Right, and you talk about the internal trauma and mm. the uh, children particularly vulnerable. What are some of the long-term consequences um, that people who are internally displaced face? I mean, I can only imagine what it's like to be a child, to if not really you, understand what's going on and stability. If you've no been stability. bombed, you had to run from a falling building, you were then shot at, your parents mm. are screaming, everybody's in total chaos. Imagine what that does to a young child. Yeah. That lodges in their system, 
And if, they're, if they grow up to be a young teenage boy, often that acts out in a great deal of violence. So we have to prevent that by actually addressing it when they're children. Mm. Girls become depressed, suicidal, yeah. and simply add to the enormity of the modern conflicts that teenagers are facing today. And being a refugee is carrying a huge burden of the mistakes we have made as, um, as cultures. We haven't looked at the roots of these conflicts and addressed them at root, and that's what we have to do now. All right, Silla Elverly, thank you so much for coming on. It was a real pleasure talking with you. Also, I want to mention that you've been nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize three times. Remarkable. I feel like an underachiever. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right.